How's it going guys? We're back at it again with another video. My name is Derek for DIY Homestead Projects. Topic for today's video, can you use a used Tesla battery pack um, that could have come from a smart car, that could have come from a Tesla, can you use that with an off-grid solar setup? Short answer is yes you can. So there are some major differences between a lithium ion battery pack like this um, compared to uh, a more standard or traditional lead acid battery that you're going to typically see in a solar setup. So we're going to go into those differences in this video as well as the benefits of using lithium ion batteries as opposed to lead acid batteries. So there's three major differences between lithium ion batteries versus lead acid batteries that I'm aware of. Uh, first one being longevity. So I've read that lithium ion batteries can cycle two to four times um, more than lead acid batteries. So if a lead acid battery, say you had a series of lead acid batteries and they can cycle a thousand times before they basically get to the point that they have to be replaced, um, an equal size kind of like a lithium ion battery setup could cycle you know, 2,000 or 3,000 times before you have to replace them. So I think that's one major consideration that a lot of people don't necessarily take into account is that while a lithium ion battery um, setup might cost more initially, over the long term, the batteries are gonna be much more economical. Another major difference is how much the batteries can be discharged. So lead acid batteries can be discharged to about 50% of their total capacity before they wanna be charged up again. Um, lithium ion batteries, they can be discharged to about 20, 25% of their total capacity. So that basically means instead of only getting 50% of the available capacity, you can get 75 to 80% of the total capacity. So you're kind of getting a little bit more bang for your buck in terms of, if you're talking in terms of watt hours or amp hours. So for this battery setup, we have 21 kilowatt hours. Um, we can discharge this down to uh, maybe you know five or six kilowatt hours comfortably. Now, if we had the same amount of kilowatt hours with a, uh, with a lead acid setup, then if we had 21 kilowatt hours, then we'd only be able to discharge them to approximately 10 and a half kilowatt hours. So we're getting a lot more discharge um, with a lithium ion battery pack. So the next major difference is that you can mount these batteries pretty well exactly how you want. So we have them mounted on the wall. I can mount them on the floor like this. I can mount them on the ceiling. Um, it doesn't really matter. These batteries also don't require any ongoing maintenance as opposed to lead acid batteries. Um, I believe lead acid batteries just have to be you know, mounted right on the floor so that you can fill them up, uh, refill them with distilled water from time to time. These batteries, no maintenance, no water, nothing like that. Set it, it's good to go. So the major thing that you wanna look out for if you wanna use lithium ion batteries is whether or not the charge controller that you have or one that you're currently looking at, whether or not it supports charging of lithium ion batteries. Um, that is extremely important because if you try to use a charge controller that doesn't support either lithium ion batteries or a custom charging cycle, then you could, uh, you could, you could just blow the batteries up and they'll just probably catch on fire. So it's really, really important that you either contact the manufacturer of the charge controller that you're looking for and just make sure that um, the charge controller does support charging lithium ion batteries. That is really important. And now since lithium ion batteries are becoming much more popular, um, more charge controllers are going to basically be able to do that. The other thing that you wanna look at for the charge controller is the max battery charge voltage. So that basically just means how many volts will the charge controller um, charge the batteries up to. So this charge controller is the Schneider Connex MPPT 60150. So it can handle up to 60 amps or 150 volts. But for the maximum battery charge voltage, it says right on the side here, so it can handle up to 72 volts. So I know with this battery pack, they can handle, uh, basically the max voltage that they can handle is 63 volts. I only charge them up to 62 volts. Uh, so we're well within the range of the, uh, what was it, 72? 72 volts. So the other major thing that you wanna look at is the specs for the inverter that you're gonna be using. So we are using the Schneider Connex SW4048. Now this inverter is designed for a battery nominal voltage of 48 volts. Now that's important. 
Um, what's also really important is what is the operating range for the inverter in terms of volts. It'll basically, it'll say it somewhere on the spec sheet. This inverter can handle up to 68 volts. I think the minimum voltage for the inverter is somewhere around like 40 or something like that. So the battery voltage for the inverter to work properly has to be between 40 and 68. Now with a lot of these um, battery packs, these Tesla battery packs or even a battery pack maybe from a, uh, a Nissan Leaf or maybe like a Chevy, one of the Chevy electric vehicles, is that they're typically, the, the battery voltages are not typically the standard voltages that you would see with most uh, solar setups. So typically with a solar setup, the nominal battery voltages are gonna be 12, 24, and 48. So the nominal battery voltage of each of these modules is 60 volts. So does that mean that the batteries are not gonna work? No, it doesn't. Because we're still within the voltage operating range of our inverter, which is gonna be between 40 to 68 volts. So these battery packs here, they range in voltage basically when they're almost, basically at their 25% capacity, they're probably around 51 or 52 volts. When they're fully charged, they're all the way up to 63. Now something that might confuse people is that battery modules or battery packs like this that go into an electric car are usually wired for between 300 to 400 volts. So that's not gonna really work with most uh, solar setups. Uh, the battery voltage is really just too high. So when I got this battery module, it's wired in series. So I basically changed the wiring of it um, from being in series to now being in parallel. So when you're wiring stuff in series, it adds the voltage up. So if each one of these is 60 volts, um, we have, actually there's only six in one of those battery packs. We have seven though here. That would be a nominal battery voltage of 360 volts. If we change it from series into parallel, that means we're just gonna be adding basically the current as opposed to adding the voltage. So basically all these battery packs are gonna be operating 60 volts in parallel. So if you totally didn't understand what I just said, that's fine. Um, just understand that, yes, you can use, um, basically use car batteries from a fully electric smart car, which is where this battery pack came from. Um, you can buy battery modules that come directly out of a, out of a used Tesla. I'm sure you can buy Nissan Leaf battery modules, as well as um, Chevy has um, electric cars as well. So you'll probably see battery packs from them as well. Um, I specifically bought these battery modules from a company called Green Tech Auto. So they are a hybrid car specialist. So you can just order these on eBay. I had them shipped to the freight terminal in Tucson, picked them up, installed them, all good to go. So I hope that kind of makes sense. Let's go over some bonus information though. How does this, basically this setup right here, how does it compare to the newest revision of the Tesla Powerwall? So originally when we were doing our solar setup, um, I did want to go with a power wall. And we're waiting for the power wall too because it's, it was much better than the power wall one. And then um, my buddy Liam helped me design the system using these used car batteries. So when you look at this setup compared to a Tesla power wall two, um, they're almost identical. So when we first got the batteries, I only had six modules, I've added one in, but originally, we would have had 18 kilowatt hours worth of storage. So each one of these is three kilowatt hours. Um, the Tesla Powerwall 2, I just looked at the specs before I came out here. It has a usable capacity to 100% depth of discharge of 13 and a half kilowatt hours. That means in the actual Powerwall 2, it has somewhere between 17 to 18 kilowatt hours worth of storage because you can't just um, discharge the batteries to zero percent. Um, the reason why they don't say it has, you know, 18 or maybe 19 or 17 kilowatt hours is because it's probably going to be confusing to most people. Um, just because you have to understand that you can only discharge these to about 25% of their total capacity. So 18 kilowatt hours in our instance translates to about 13 to 14 kilowatt hours of usable capacity. So our setup here has about 21 kilowatt hours which is gonna to translate to about 15 or 16 kilowatt hours of usable storage. The other major difference is just with the inverter of the power wall. Um, it can handle a continuous wattage of five kilowatts, whereas this one can only handle four kilowatts. Um, so that just basically means you can run more stuff instantaneously at one time, 
on the uh, on the Powerwall 2 versus we just don't have that extra thousand watts that the inverter can handle. Um, the cool thing about inverters though is that they have the continuous wattage. So the, the wattage that it can just run all day long without any issues. Um, so for, the, for example, this one can handle four kilowatts. Now it can surge up to 5,000 or even 6,000 kilowatts, or sorry, 5,000 or 6,000 watts, um, but it can only do so for um, a certain period of time. And that's the same thing with the Powerwall 2 is that it can surge up to seven kilowatts. The other major difference is with the input voltage into the controller. Like our charge controller can handle up to a maximum of 140 volts, um, whereas I think the Powerwall 2 can handle up to between 300 to 400 volts. I don't know the exact specs on it. Those are the major differences, but in terms of performance, um, they're pretty much very similar. So if you wanted kind of a visual idea of what would be comparable to a Powerwall 2, um, this is uh, this is pretty much it. One last thing that I want to mention is that Liam is uh, he's finishing up a PDF and a lot of really good um, basically spreadsheets that you can use in order to design an off-grid solar system. So he's working on finishing in that and it'll basically go through all the steps and all the calculations that we did for this particular solar setup. Um, I think for the size of this, this is going to be pretty good for a lot of homes, a lot of smaller homes. Once you start getting into larger homes, you're basically just gonna need more batteries and you might have to either get a, an inverter that's just a lot larger or you're gonna have to um, use two inverters. And if you have any questions in the meantime about um, solar setups and all that kind of stuff, definitely check out our Facebook group because I'm in there answering questions, Liam is in there answering questions specifically about solar and uh, yeah, we wanna help you guys out. Awesome guys, thanks so much for watching. Catch you on the next video, talk to you soon.